Boom, we are live, ladies and gentlemen. Wanted to go over some fun data I was looking at today. So let's just dive right in. We've been talking about this before, but the Federal Reserve is one of the largest market makers in all of the world's history. And they have their open market committee meeting on the 19th to 20th coming up. This will likely be a time where we get to find out if they are going to pause rates or not. Um, the reason why this is important, first off, shout out to look into Bitcoin for giving us access to their new premium suite. This is something we talk about frequently. Um, it's the rise of the Federal Reserve balance sheet. <laughs> Almost sounds like a movie trilogy. And in some degree it is. It's driven most of our economic um, pressures in, with the United States and all around the world for for probably a few decades at the very least. From the 1960s, 70s, Bretton Woods seems to be pretty strong. And in a very short period of time, they increased that federal balance sheet from just $4 trillion to around $7 trillion here. And afterwards, because most of this asset went into purchasing other things aside from Bitcoin, Bitcoin then benefited from the growth of the overall M2 supply alongside everybody else. As M2 started to decrease, or the Fed balance sheet started to decrease, then Bitcoin's price started to decrease as well. Effectively, they have such a strong control over the market sentiment that <clears throat> effectively Bitcoin benefits every time that they inflate the monetary supply. So just like we said it would, Bitcoin benefits from inflation. Now, it doesn't in, in, in inherently benefit from the inflation of products because something could go wrong in the supply chain and that would create an inflation in the price because there's something wrong with the supply chain, which has nothing to do with monetary inflation. But anyways, there's different ways you could look at what that thing is. So one of the reasons why I thought this was important is because talking about some type of pivot, I've been talking about blood in the streets for quite some time and the Federal Reserve's reaction and then the subsequent potential from the reaction if you have a deflationary event like more people dying on average than every year and that same amount of money being injected into the market, you're likely to have more of that fewer people feel the monetary benefit, if that makes sense, because there's less people than this equal amount of money being printed today would be a stronger injection of monetary heroin for each individual person. Anyways, the unemployment rate here has started to tick up. Um, this is a pretty noticeable indicator and it's above previous um, lows. The other thing that we thought was important was I wanted to clarify this. Um, someone asked the question and I made the mistake. I said only a few million people on disability in the United States. That was very wrong. Apparently I was very wrong there. Um, it's way worse than that. It is like significantly worse than I thought. Like, <laughs> you know, when you make, you're like, oh my God, look how bad this is. And then you realize the data is even worse. This is a blood in the streets moment. That is a moment to be bullish overall. I think we're in an accumulation time, but I think we need to pay attention to the negative and crosswinds and the deflationary tailwinds that come alongside this. So this is actually disability going up from 28 million people. So 28,000, thousand, thousands of persons you can see on the left hand side of the chart here, thousands of persons. So from the start of the pandemic, you have 28 million people, 28,000 thousands, moving up to 35 four million people or 34,000 thousand So I went and just wanted to double check because that sounded insane to me, which sounds like almost like a 10, that's like 10 to 12% of all of the United States is on disability to some degree. That doesn't even make sense. You have more people on disability than are on unemployment. That's ridiculous. So overall, there are about 42.5 million uh, Americans with disabilities, making up 13% of the civilized non-institutionalized non population. Um, so this is pretty bad. That's pretty bad. I mean, I don't, I can't see that's a good thing, but a dramatic rise from 28 to 34 million people on, uh, with a disability in the population. Those are people that are not generally on the workforce or providing a ton of economic movement. Um, so why are some of these things important? No, because you have so many people, this massive unemployment, um, which is actually just sitting hidden in the disability charts, the people that are moving in and the increase in unemployment in the United States. And when we know the Federal Reserve controls most of the market, I suspect that we're in an accumulation range. So this is another fun chart. We used to look at this all, all the time, the R-HODL ratio. We're down near the bottom here. We're still in general accumulation. And when we look around the streets, that's what we see. Um, we see f f some of the, uh, I, I think I closed the, uh, there we go. 
Um, I'm going to put my face to the left hand side. You guys get to watch this. They're just going to save over here from to, to begin with. So the R HODL ratio is back down below $100. Um, so I, th I think in general, this is accumulation. Even if Bitcoin comes down to, let's say, 25, uh, 21,000, 22,000, which it very well could to test the bottom of the supply range here. Um, ultimately, long term, I'm bullish because what we have to remember is that this is when governments are doing things that are bad for you, bad for your money, bad for everybody. And that's all we've seen since 2020. So ultimately, I think the value of Bitcoin will will eventually see way more people understanding as again freedoms rights liberties monetary choice all start to disappear again um and it's not a fun thing so price and value are not ever to be construed as the same thing off because val B bitcoin's effective value has never changed but the price has changed dramatically throughout that throughout that lifespan so it's important to note um the s&p 500 here as well we broke outside and into a new SOS, and we're just completing the backup phase. So we aren't in any territory that looks ultimately bearish. And I still think we could see new all-time highs based off the idea that they don't, most people don't own assets of any kind anyways. They don't own a house. They don't own property. I think most people don't even have $500 to, so if you, if you have more than those things, you're like in the wealthiest categories, but most people, the like 90% don't have that. So whatever, who's bought, whoever's buying up here are some of the elite few. And I suspect that this big gap was enough to get rid of most of retail to begin with. So what's left are mostly the big players. I think we're going to get a monetary injection somewhere between here and the election. So whether it happens today or tomorrow, it'll be a big indicator for Bitcoin. Because what I, what I would like to say is when in doubt, zoom out. So we zoomed out on Bitcoin. This is a monthly chart. And what I think this looks similar to is potentially from 2019. Um, when we jumped up, we saw a massive amount of supply, and this became the new automatic rally. And we had talked about this um, going through the last part of this cycle before we went up to $60,000. We got really excited because on the monthly, we had what appeared to be an automatic rally, a spring, and then the test and the movement upwards. So it looked like a bull market was going to take place. So that's kind of what I'm questioning now is do we see something similar now? And when, when in doubt, zoom out phrase shows that we may actually um, have a, a, you know, we could come down to $15,000 to complete this um, trading range. Now, again, I don't think that that's, I wouldn't bet on that. It's better just to focus on the long-term narrative of, of where we are right now, which is in accumulation. We can see this with our HODL ratio, does a great job of that. Um, but I would, yeah, no leverage positions right now. Spot buying only. That would be my suggestion, unless <laughs> so, or options maybe. Um, okay, the last things I wanted to look at was also the Nasdaq Commodities Index is also above the, the trading range here, and we could be ready to see new all-time highs. The only thing we need to do is see the Fed print. We are at a multiple point um, resistance here for the U.S. dollar going back um, since 2008. This rising trading range has been taking place. And as we zoom in a little bit closer on the six hour, we can see that we are trapped below and turning down again. So we could see the dollar turn down. We could see a reduction in rates. We could see the money printer come back on for some time near the election. And all those things would spell new all-time highs for much of the stock market and definitely put Bitcoin back up there as well. I think Bitcoin still has a high potential to go to 40 grand, but right now it's like it could, it's a 50-50, so just stay spot and you're fine. Anyways, um, I thought that was fun or well, some of it's not fun data. I didn't realize there's 42 million dis disabled Americans. That's such a 13% of the entire American population is on is on some type of disability. But only 3.8% of the population is unemployed. It's like, those numbers don't add up. That's a, lot, that's a lot of the population. Anyways, not all news is good news, and no news is also good news. So it's not news, it's just data. Try to look at it at that point, and then so not data if you know someone that's died because of things, then it becomes more of a story and a tragedy. But a lot of this is data. Um, so try to remember it that way um, and keep keep the idea that you know i think amongst these big tr cyclical changes you not only are going to see the death of one system but the birth of another so 
Um, Bitcoin, I think I still the North Star for that positioning. Um, and I believe games are the on-ramp, although they're getting destroyed right now. So I don't <laughs> feel too confident about my my sentiment there. But nonetheless, I say stay true to that conviction. I still think that video games will be the on-ramp for the majority of people that come later on in the cycle. But we're still, still waiting for that one. If you've got any thoughts, questions, comments, leave them down below. Um, we'll see you guys again in the next episode.